I call this meeting of the Williamsburg James City County School Board to order. Uh, can I get a motion for certification of closed session, please? Mr. Chair, I certify that to the best of each member's knowledge, the Williamsburg James City County School Board, while in closed session, discussed only public matters lawfully exempt from open meeting requirements as stated in Virginia law, and only such public matters were, as were identified in the motion convening the closed meeting were read, discussed, or considered. Thank you, Mrs. Miner. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Ms. Serza? Ms. Cook? Aye. Ms. Hummel? Aye. Ms. Miner? Aye. Mrs. Taylor? Aye. Mrs. Young? Aye. Dr. Beers? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Thank you. That takes us to 3.01, Pledge of Allegiance. Tonight we have with us Carter Motes, a uh, fourth grader from Matthew Whaley. Carter, if you could come forward and uh, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Everyone, please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Carter. <laughs> what a pleasure getting to know Carter before the meeting. Uh, that takes us to 3.02, the role. Ms. Serza? Dr. Beers? Here. Ms. Cook? Here. Ms. Hummel? Here. Ms. Miner? Present. Mrs. Taylor? Here. Mrs. Young? Here. Mr. Kelly? Here. Thank you. Takes us to 4.01. Mrs. Cook, can I get a motion for approval of the agenda? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. I'd like to um, make a motion to approve the agenda as presented, but with the following amendment, the addition of item 6.02, Matthew Whaley School Spotlight. Thank you. Um, is there a second of, of the amended agenda? Second. Any discussion? Ms. Serza? Ms. Hummel? Aye. Ms. Miner? Aye. Mrs. Taylor? Aye. Mrs. Young? Aye. Dr. Beers? Aye. Ms. Cook? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Thank you. 5.01, announcement superintendent report. Dr. Heron? Good evening, Mr. Chair. On Thursday, 27th of October, WJCC's school counseling programs will be hosting the Virginia College Tour at Jamestown High School. Attendees will have the opportunity to speak with representatives from over 70 colleges and universities. This year, students and their families may attend a college admissions panel with a select group of college admission officers and representatives. Here, they will be able to ask questions and learn about analyzing transcripts, choosing the right school, using the Common App, and much more. The college admission panel begins at 5.15 in the Jamestown High School Lecture Hall, and the fair will run from 6.30 through 8.30 in the cafeteria. There's no charge for admission, and all high school students are encouraged to attend. On Wednesday, November 16th, WJCC will host its first Parent Academy of the school year. The topic is resiliency, helping your child cope with anxiety. Attendees will learn about school-related anxiety, how to identify the signs, how it affects students, and coping and preventative strategies. To register, please visit wjccschools.org and click on the slide on the home page. And finally, today we broke ground for the new James Blair Middle School. I'd like to thank all of the school board members who were able to attend, as well as several officials from the city and county. We're excited about moving this project forward, and we will provide this, the board with updates as we reach milestones along the way. Those are all of the announcements I have this evening, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Dr. Heron. Is there any announcements from board members tonight? Um, I would I would second the uh, Parent Academy. I went I attended a couple of those last year, and those were very worthwhile and very uh, educational. I would encourage parents to attend that. Um, also tonight, uh, unfortunately, there was a conflict as the the Williamsburg Education Foundation is meeting, um, having their kick and your fundraiser kickoff, and I would encourage everyone to support the Education Foundation as it, it uh, delivers uh, grant money. Um, to our teachers for innovative learning and is and has been well received by both the teachers and the community so I would encourage everyone to support both of those uh, 6.01 board recognitions dr. Heron 
This evening, uh, Mr. Chair, I'm uh, delighted to introduce Matthew Whaley Elementary School, and Mrs. Robin Ford is here to introduce the school spotlight. Thank you, Mrs. Ford. Good evening, Mr. Kelly, Ms. Cook, members of the school board, and Dr. Heron. My name is Robin Ford, and I am the proud principal of the Matthew Whaley School. Our school is unique not only in its history and location in our community, but also in the many wonderful extracurricular learning opportunities our students have every year. This evening, we would like to share one particular program with you, our morning news program. Daily, our students have the opportunity to communicate, collaborate, and integrate their skills and knowledge as they deliver the news to our student body. I would like to introduce our teacher leader, Mr. Chris Van Dusen, a Matthew Whaley graduate, Haley Bauer, and current Matthew Whaley student, Katie Motes, who will tell you more about our morning news. Haley would like to go first. Um, hi, my name is Haley Bauer, and I am a sixth grade student at Berkeley Middle School. Um, the morning news helped me so much going into middle school. Most of the people that I know from, were, that I know now, were from the morning news. I met in the morning news. Um, I have a technology class this year, and um, being on the morning news helped me learn about computers and how to use them, and um, that's really helped with my technology class. I am more social and um, it's just helped a lot. Thank you, Haley. Thank you. Hi, my name is Katie Motes. I hold the position of the Morning News Director. News Director. The Morning News has taught me many le leadership skills. Being the director of the Morning News is very tough and difficult. The Morning News has taught me how to deal with technical problems, different people, and different personalities. I am very thankful for the teacher support and staff support of the Morning News. We work very hard every day to improve. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. They do work very hard, and when you see the, um, the video, you'll, you'll see how teamwork comes into play, creative solutions to problems, and uh, Haley was talking about social skills, and there's leadership skills. There's so many different um, leadership opportunities. Um, when you watch the video, I challenge you to see to count how many adults you see in the video. And um, there are so many jobs. I think we left out video editors in the um, in the video, but the video will explain itself. It's uh, the time lapse. It's about 20 minutes from the time they get off the bus until the time they're supposed to be in their seats, ready to learn at 9:30 without um, disrupting instruction. So, morning news. morning news programs. We like to think that ours is a little different. We don't pre-record them post on YouTube. We go live every time, every day. We don't need an adult to hold the cameras for us or run the sound or tell us when we're doing something wrong. Well, well sometimes. sometimes. <laughs> In fact, the students do everything. We have a staff of 35 students with 13 on-air personalities. We even have a news director, two floor directors, a technical director, sound engineer, multimedia director, a teleprompter, broadcast supervisor, three camera operators, four broadcast associates, a lighting specialist, and Emily is the key grip. We call her Cord Girl. We get off the bus at 9 10, check in with our teachers, and then head to the newsroom, which is the computer lab. We set up the news desk, soundboard, VBRIC broadcasting module, lighting, three cameras, three microphones, two backdrops, teleprompter laptop and monitor, multimedia laptop, channel switcher, 
and too many cords and cables to count. Actually, there are 25 cables. It looks like spaghetti. Several computers are logged into the Matthew Valley mobile channel. The goal is to have a broadcast signal by 918. Once the broadcast signal is established, four broadcast associates go to check on all the classrooms to offer assistance to teachers if they have trouble logging in and viewing the news. The sound check and the camera check also begin when the signal is established. The crew troubleshoots any problems before 922. That's when opening credits begin. The news is given, which includes menu, weather, birthdays, the Pledge of Allegiance, the Patriot Pl Pride Pledge, the This Day in History, upcoming events, and any other appropriate news. No one ever says, that's not my job, because even though I may be a camera operator, the lights still need to be set up if Tevin's bus is late. So every job is my job. <laughs> we all feel that way. We also learn leadership skills on and off the set. We teach each other new things almost every day. There are always opportunities during lunch or recess to meet and work on morning news projects. <clears throat> That's the other thing. The morning news is set up so it shouldn't interfere with classroom instructions. All of our meeting and work sessions occur during lunch, recess, or in the morning before 9.30. Also, we are all required to keep our work up to date, return library books on time, maintain good citizenship, and always promote our patriot pride of being respectful, <laughs> responsible, hardworking, and safe through our words and our actions. We set the example in our school because we know that being a part of the morning news is not a right. It is a privilege that can be taken away. We know that sometimes kids don't always listen to directions, and we sometimes don't pay attention to the lesson, and then we mess up and frustrate you, our educators. We know it. But remember this, the next time you look at us and worry about the fate of the world, think again. Don't be too concerned for our future. Because if we can do this, just think what we'll be capable of when we grow up. Good evening. This is Wake Up Daily on September 9th, 2016. I'm your host, Shelby Gilbert, with your co-host, Micah Chisholm. Good morning, Micah. Good morning, Shelby. Today we have some great stories. But first, let's go to the Patriot Pledge with Ms. Kenzie Peterson. Good morning, Mackenzie. Good morning, Micah. I'm Mackenzie Peterson, and I will be leading you in the pledge. Please put your right hand over your heart. Ready, salute. I think the answer to the trivia question was zero, right? <laughs> uh, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Any board member comments on the, the morning news of Matthew Whale? Ms. Cook? Yeah, I can't help myself. I'm sorry. You indulge <laughs> me. So both of my children participated in the morning news with Mr. V and talked about it almost every day, particularly the courts. That was a common theme at uh, dinner every night. But um, it, it, I... It teaches kids to think on their feet, to be organized. Thank you for that. Um, uh, and anyway, I, it's just a wonderful program. And, uh, and to this day, even though they're in middle school, they talk about it and remember it fondly. And it was really a part of their um, educational formation and journey. So thank you. Any other board members? I, I remember Mr. Van Dusen very fondly with um, my children going through. And although I don't think they were newscasters, as the uh, once chairman of the Strawberry Festival, I remember quite clearly, we're like, oh, we've got to get on the morning news. We've got to push the Strawberry Festival tickets. And it was always like, okay, how do we get the word out? It's the morning news. We, we you know, always use the morning news. So it's experiential learning at its best. And uh, the skills that these kids bring with them to middle school and on just can't be quantified. So thanks so much for doing this program. Yes, and thank you, Haley and uh, Katie, for coming to talk out, talk to us tonight. That's uh, um, since you since you do the morning news, I'm sure this was just no this wasn't intimidating at all. This was fine. So 
great. No anxiety at all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you much. Appreciate it. Um, that takes us to 6.01, board recognitions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We have several recognitions tonight. Um, because of their achievement in building effective family school partnerships, Lafayette High School and Lafayette PTSA have been recognized as a 2016 through 18 National PTA School of Excellence. This designation is awarded when a PTA and school have achieved a high level of family engagement or when a PTA and school have made substantive positive improvement in families' perceptions by the end of the school year. With Prince, Assistant Principal Michelle Newcomb, Lisa Lucas, and other members of the Lafayette PTSS leadership team, please come up to the front to be recognized. Congratulations again to the Ram family. Well done. Jamestown, Lafayette and Warhill High Schools have all, have all been named Wise Blue Star Schools. This recognition is earned when a school achieves an 80% pass rate on the financial literacy certification test and have either a majority of students on a given, on a given grade level take the test or have students who took it achieve a score of 85% or higher. With Crystal Haskins from Jamestown, Michelle Newcomb from Lafayette, and Eric Ames from Warhill, please join us up front on behalf of your school. Great job again, all three schools. Well done. <laughs> now we would like to acknowledge several members of the school board. The Virginia School Board Association recognizes board members for their dedication, time and hard work in improving boardsmanship skills through VSBA meetings, conferences, board development and training and active involvement in the association. Board members earn credits from VSBA Academy Awards, which are based on participation from July 1st to June 30th of each year. There are five levels of award with certificates and pins awarded for particular levels. Please join me in congratulating several members for this accomplishment. And first of all this evening, uh, Mr. Jim Kelly, our chair, is receiving the Award of Honor Level 4. <laughs> and in addition, Mr. Kelly has achieved a gold pin for 68 credits earned over two years. Congratulations. <laughs> and second, Ms., uh, Mrs. Kira Cook, Vice Chair. And she is receiving this evening the Award of Excellence Level 3. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm going to participate in that one. <laughs> and, and also, Ms. Cook has earned the silver pin, uh, having achieved 48 credits over two years. Very well done.
Next, we'd like to honor uh, James, James Beers, Dr. Beers, parliamentarian. If you'd like to come forward. <laughs> Dr. Beers is receiving an award of recognition, level one, this evening. Congratulations. <laughs> We'd also rec like, like to recognize uh, Mrs. Mary Minor this evening. Please come forward. Oops. Mrs. Minor is accepting award of recognition, level one, this evening. Congratulations. And finally, we'd like to rec sorry. Finally, we'd rec like to recognise Mrs. Hummel, uh, who's receiving an award of recognition, level one. Please come forward. Chair, that concludes recognitions for this evening. We will have more recognitions at next month's regular meeting. Thank you very much. Expecting the VSBA awards, but uh, professional development is an important part of board service. And I think that all the board members who have, all the board members have participated in um, professional development and uh, appreciate all their good hard work. That takes us to 7.01 citizens comments. Dr. Beers? It's at this point in our meeting where citizens are invited to address the board. These citizens desiring to speak have submitted speaker cards to the clerk prior to the start of tonight's meeting. Speakers are asked to come to the podium when their names are called, state their names for the record, and direct their comments to the chair of the board. It is, in, it, it is the board's interest and desire that all comments are heard and respected. Hence, the citizens are asked to not engage in applauding, verbal outbursts, or any other type of demonstrations during the presentation. Personal matters are not considered in public meetings. Therefore, the board requests that all speakers refrain from making reference to specific individuals in any form or fashion. Though the board does not respond to your comments, your comments are heard and appreciated. Each speaker has allocated three minutes to make their presentation, and the board asks that you respect this time limitation. Also, please be reminded that no time may be yielded to another speaker. Your acceptance and adherence to these guidelines will be greatly appreciated. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My directions are concluded. Thank you, Dr. Beers. Mrs. Cook. <clears throat> Jessica O'Brien, please. Uh, let me, didn't expect to be first, sorry. Okay. You're also last. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's easy. Um, I'm Jessica O'Brien. Um, I'm an uh, independent insurance agent here in Williamsburg. I'm also um, the secretary of the NAACP and the president of Altogether, a local community nonprofit. Um, I would like to inquire about the renaming of Rawls Bird Elementary. I haven't heard of any progress coming up with new naming guidelines, and I'd like to express my concern that this process be completed as soon as possible so the citizens of Williamsburg, James City County can move forward on choosing a new, more appropriate name. In addition, the news reporting in the Virginia Gazette when the school board voted to change the name was alarming. The, news, the paper reported that neither the principal nor the teachers were at, at all prepared to explain why the name was being changed. Indeed, a, a teacher was quoted as saying that she had no idea why it was happening. 
Unless she had her head buried in the sand, this seems very ingenious um, and the issue, as the issue had been discussed in the local paper for several weeks before the vote. Perhaps someone that out of touch with important news directly relating to her job and the students for whom she is responsible is not actually so well qualified to be leading the children, the education of our children. In fact, this change in school name is an excellent opportunity to talk with the students at Rawlsbird about why the change was important. Uh, a real teaching moment related to a lesson on how important it is to value all the people in our community, all our friends and all the adults in our lives, to teach that everyone has inherent worth and dignity, not just leaders. This is, um, and to reveal that even adults make mistakes and can be very wrong. This is a valuable lesson if we want to raise thinking children and affirm the value of their natural inborn sense of fairness and empathy. I hope that the school board sets the tone for this going high moment, as Michelle Obama has modeled recently, and encourages the administration at Rollsburg Elementary and indeed at all James, Williamsburg James City County schools to use this renaming as a valuable lesson in citizenship. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. O'Brien. No other speaker cards tonight? Yes, that takes us to the consent agenda. Can I get a motion for approval of the consent agenda 8.01, approval of minutes from the following meetings, September 20th, 2016, and October 4th, 2016, 8.02, financial report and monthly bills and payroll, September 2016, 8.03, personnel actions as presented this evening, and 8.04, resolution R1416, school psychology awareness week, November 14th through 18th, 2016. Can I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move the acceptance of the consent agenda as presented. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Ms. Serza? Mrs. Taylor? Aye. Mrs. Young? Aye. Dr. Beers? Aye. Ms. Cook? Aye. Ms. Hummel? Aye. Ms. Minor? Aye. <clears throat> Mr. Kelly? Aye. Thank you. That takes us to 9.01, action item 9.01, School Board Advisory Committee appointments. Can I get a motion for approval of the 2016-2017 Advisory Committee member appointments and committee charges as presented this evening? Anybody? Mr. Chairman, I move the approval of action item 9.1, School Board Advisory Committee appointments. Is there a second? Second. During discussion. <coughs> It's been moved and seconded for approval of the 2016-2017 Advisory Committee member appointments and committee charges as presented this evening. Ms. Serza? Mrs. Young? Aye. Dr. Beers? Aye. Ms. Cook? Aye. Ms. Hummel? Aye. Ms. Minor? Aye. Mrs. Taylor? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Thank you. Uh, actually, item 9.02, can I get a motion to award a contract for RFP number 17-11110, Engineering Services, for the design of the Norwich Elementary School HVAC replacement to Mosley Architects in the amount of $298,543. Mr. Chair, I move approval of item 9.02, award a contract for RFP number 17-111. One zero engineering services for the design of the Norwich Elementary School HVAC replacement to Mosley Architects in the amount of $298,543. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? It's been moved and seconded for the award of contract for RFP 1711110, engineering services for the design of the Norwich Elementary School HVAC replacement to Mosley Architects in the amount of $298,543. Mrs. Serza? Mrs. Hummel. Aye. Ms. Minor? Aye. Mrs. Taylor? Aye. Mrs. Young? Aye. Dr. Beers? Aye. Ms. Cook? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Thank you. That takes us to information discussion items. 10.01, fiscal year 2018 through 2017, superintendent's proposed capital improvement plan. Dr. Hare. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It is my pleasure this evening to present my proposed capital improvement plan uh, this evening. As you know, on September 20th, 2016, Ms. Berder presented the Capital Improvements Development Committee recommendations. Based on further research and analysis of the recommended capital improvements by the committee, I've made some adjustments to the plan which Ms. Berta will present on my behalf this evening. 
Before that, I want to thank the members of the Booster Club and Lafayette High School students who presented at the public hearing on October 4th. The concerns expressed about the path students take from Lafayette High School to, to the Warhill Sports Complex were of great concern to the board and to me. Due to the real concerns for the safety of students, I have not included a walk away from Lafayette High School to the Warhill Sports Complex in the updated CIP. Students told us they had an unwritten rule not to take the path alone due to its location. My main concern is that students using the proposed walkway through an isolated wooden area unsupervised would present a major safety issue in the future. I visited Lafayette High School the morning after the CIP public hearing, examined the student, student pathway, spent time with Lafayette, Lafayette High School administration and Mr. Lynn, the athletic director, working toward a better and safer solution for students. Collaboratively, we decided it was vital to student safety to immediately prohibit students using the unsafe path. Mr. Lynn has communicated this expectation to all coaches and athletic teams at Lafayette High School. Instead of the proposed walkway, WJCC will continue to provide ongoing, regular transportation to safely transport students to the practice fields. Coach Lynn is providing staff with a schedule of sports, transportation needs, so that we can make this happen consistently and fully meet the needs of staff and students. Second, and again with full collaboration and support of the Athletics Director, Mr. Lynn, and the Administration, I have removed the permanent practice light field lighting from fiscal year 23 of the committee recommended CIP. Together, we've decided on a solution that will be much more immediate and cost effective in the form of acquiring portable field lights for the practice fields. Mr. Snipes and Mr. Lynn are currently working to implement this solution. Next, I draw your attention to a change in fiscal year 19. The cafeteria and core space expansion of Jamestown High School will remain in fiscal year 19. The funding of, for this request is accomplished through a shift in funding as the total projected cost for design and expansion of all three high schools in fiscal year 21 and 22 includes expansion of the core area and cafeteria for Jamestown High School. Having walked through the cafeteria two weeks ago, it was very evident that due to capacity issues, this, this space will need to be expanded prior to, the, uh, to adding additions to the high schools in fiscal year 22. Excuse me, 22. Therefore, this project re will remain in fiscal year 19 in my proposed CIP. These changes result in an overall reduction of $2 million from the original recommendation of the CIP, CIP committee. Ms. Berta, Chief Financial Officer, will now present an overview of all of the fiscal year 18 projects and the five year plan and is ready to respond to any questions that you may have. Thank you, Ms. Berta. Thank you. thank you, Ms. Burton. Dr. Aaron, I, I would like to take uh, this opportunity to thank you for the immediate um, look at the safety of the Lafayette students and, the, and taking the path and the, and the immediate actions there. I, <coughs> I appreciate, the, appreciate those actions. Ms. Burton. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Dr. Heron. Before you this evening is the superintendent's proposed fiscal year 18 through 27 capital improvement plan. As we begin to review, please note the focus of this presentation includes the following. Our main focus being on fiscal year 18, as that is the next immediately funded year. We will review the modifications, some of which already have been discussed, with the additions and deletions to fiscal year 18 from the adopted fiscal year 17 five-year plan. All projects include an anticipated A&E design cost of 10%, contingency of 5%, and an escalation at an annual rate of 3%. A new project may appear in the CIP for the first time due to new or updated information being received. And a note that is new in this presentation is with the opening of the James Blair Middle School, new buses may be needed in fiscal year 19. Once a redistricting plan has been approved by the school board, the number of needed buses will be determined at that time. To recap the projects that are included in fiscal year 18, 
There are exterior masonry repairs necessary at Clara Bird Baker for $1,311,272. The design of the Rawls Bird HVAC replacement for $210,000. This is a three year project. The entrance redesign at DJ Montague for $140,000. Sidewalk and parking lot corrections also at DJ Montague for $80,500. The entrance redesign at Norge Elementary for 105,000. Berkeley Middle School replacement of electric, electrical equipment in the 100 and 200 areas for a total of 222,094. Replacement of the auditorium seating at Berkeley Middle School, $167,633. The roof replacement at Lafayette, we did go to a different um, vendor to verify that what we were receiving in that cost was accurate. That was an accurate cost, so we have left that $2.6 million in the budget because that is what we are getting from two vendors is necessary in order to properly replace that roof at Lafayette. Toanne and Middle School replacing the walk-in refrigerator and freezer, 82400 the Jamestown High School HVAC design, this is again a three-year project, $320,000. The EFS repair at Jamestown, $86,500 exterior insulation finishing systems. Parking lots division-wide, $118,785. Fire plan panels division-wide, $105,060. And the Warhill Pathways Makerspace and Chemistry Lab, 300,000. Changes in the future years, 19 through 27. Um, the Jamestown Cafeteria Core Space Expansion, as Dr. Heron alluded to, we have reduced our funding request in fiscal year 22 for the high school expansions to support this project in fiscal year 2019. Currently, as of the September 30th, 2015 count, Jamestown was over capacity by 100 students. Based on the 10-day count that was taken on September the 20th, Jamestown High School was over capacity by 139 students. We're still in the process of finalizing our September 30th count, so I can provide that information to you once that report is finalized. But those numbers continue to climb. Warhill High School, we shifted the refurbishment from the CIP Development Committee's recommendation from 2020 to 2021 in an effort to balance our funding request. In Lafayette, as Dr. Heron has alluded to, we have removed the practice field lighting with a different alternative solution. So to recap our five-year request, um, reviewing what we had presented as the CIP Development Committee, our total is reduced by $2 million. That will be impacted in 2022. That number was 23 million in the prior presentation. So our five-year request is $52,301,243. As a reminder for upcoming meetings on November 1st, we will have a school board discussion and ranking of our capital improvement projects. November 15th will be a public hearing on the superintendent's proposed CIP. And then our hope is by December 13th, we can adopt as a school board our CIP for passing to our funding partners. That concludes our presentation and I'll be happy to entertain any questions. Board member questions? Ms. Young? Um, Ms. Ms. Berta, um, I, the withdrawal of the walkway completely from the Lafayette uh, school facility um, the, one of the things that it was t was spoken of is that there, there needed to be a lot more information, but it has now been completely removed, as is my understanding. That is correct. The recommendation um, is removal. Okay, so there is absolutely no um, I don't want to say no way, but so that is that's basically off the board, even though I that I think that would be a good solution for the I mean for the community. But that is the superintendent's recommendation. This is at this is being passed to you for your your input, and you certainly can add things and delete things as we have presented them. That is your purview. Okay. Was was this um, passed by um, the, the county also? We have not shared this document with county and city at this point. Not, we don't. You typically share that until you have voted on it and approved your CIP as a school board. Right. Okay. Thank you. 
because I, I mean, I, th I still think that that's a viable solution to the, the way of getting students back and forth um, over to the, the sports complex. And, and I do appreciate the fact that they can't access that at this point. So I want to thank the superintendent for taking that under, um, her, under advisement and, and getting kids off of there completely. Um, okay, I will think of how I want to present this in a different way because I, I still think that's a viable thing for kids. But anyway, thank you. Thank you. Um, I might piggyback on to Mrs. Young's comment. <clears throat> I can appreciate the concern for safety and I'm glad that we <coughs> found a alternate solution but I'm not sure if it's going to be a long-term solution and so I I also feel like completely uh, taking the the walkway out of the CIP um, rather than maybe uh, delaying it for a couple of years so that we can see how this alternate solution works out for everyone um, and then at that point reassess and see see uh, how the transportation is actually working and then we still have kind of a, a holding place for the walkway uh, in the CIP. Uh, I think right now gas prices are cheap and we have maybe an extra bus that can can hopefully help transport the students. I'm not sure long term whether that's a viable uh, alternative. And maybe, you know, it would be nice to have a walkway that would easily uh, connect students from one place to the other place without having to uh, have a bus driver and uh, idling buses and going back and forth. Uh, so I, I agree with Mrs. Young. I, I would. I would like there to be a little more uh, investigation done, especially, and, and if it ends up that we can't do it, it's an ADA concern, it's going to be $1.5 million or, or whatever, but I, I can understand that and, and maybe at that point we deal with that. But I'm not 100% convinced that this is an item that should be removed completely from the CIP. Mrs. Cook? Thank you. Thank you for the presentation and for the, um, the recommendation, Dr. Heron. Um, I actually, um, I, I appreciate that the walkway was removed from this CIP. Um, that said, I agree with my colleagues that I would like some more uh, investigation done. Um, I think that when I think about our instruction from the Commonwealth to look at the needs of this com and present budgets of need, um, I don't think a walkway is a need that we have and I don't and I'm concerned about the opportunity cost if I have to weigh buses against pathways um, or other or um, other capital needs that we might have and, and compare that to a walkway and when I look at how many students a walkway impacts versus perhaps another investment I'm not convinced that it, the request should come from us um, that said there are other connective pathways and walkways that are that that connect schools to other recreational facilities in the county. Um, if I understand correctly, those have come to fruition through the county CIP process and that they have successfully applied for grants to uh, at least in part fund those facilities. So I wonder if it's an opportunity for us not to drop the idea but maybe not have it be part of our request to the funding bodies but start a long-term conversation with the county and Parks and Rec to see if it's a priority for them and if it fits in their strategic plan and if so, if it's something that we can partner on. But when I think about it as our request to our funding bodies, I'm not sure it, it passes that test of need, um, particularly when you add what else we need. So, that, so I don't want to drop it either, but I'm not sure it fits in our CIP. Any other board member questions or comments on the that's just for the CIP. walkway, but I have another comment, but did you want to say something? I was just going to say uh, one thing um, about what Ms. Cook just said. I, I would really like to pursue the idea of working with Parks and Recreation and seeing if, the, if somehow this can be worked out between Parks and Recreation and, and, and our needs. Um, and I, I agree, it's not necessarily we have other needs that are probably 
far more necessary. But on the other hand, when I look at Clara Bird Baker, Jamestown High School, um, these, these schools that have access from the public to the grounds, um, I also think that's one of the reasons I think Parks and Recreation is the perfect place to go with this and see if we can't get some um, added benefit from working together with them. And I do appreciate everything that you've done, Ms. Berta. This is a tremendous amount of work, and I do thank you. Mrs. Meyer? Uh, first, thank you, Dr. Heron, for your recommendations. I know they were thoughtful, and, and as board members have already suggested, we have lots of challenges and only a certain amount of money. And um, I, I'm always hesitant to play um, balanced students, a set of students or a set of needs against the other. I don't, I don't, I'm not comfortable with that zero-sum game. But I have to say my, my members are correct. If we have needs for classroom space, and a walkway, then we really need to come to the decision what is our major primary responsibility and, and all. So I would also like to say um, moving it back further because you just mentioned as we go to James, um, opening James Blair, we need more buses and all. If this long, this solution with the buses is something that's going to be viable, placed with the demand for the buses. That's that's all. And if there's some other way, probably I'm the most familiar with that. Um, because I know that when the youngsters run through that path, they really connect to the walking path that's around the whole War Hill track. Um, and I do walk, I, I have walked that War Hill track all seven and a half kilometers on a pretty regular basis, so I know where the students come into it. Unlike Ms. Young, I've never chosen to go down into the ravine, um, <laughs> but I do know where they come up and they, and they enter it. And I think that while we talk about safety concerns, there's a number of citizens and bike people and, and walking people that use that path all the time. So if we have a concern about safety for our students, we also need to talk about whether there's a safety concern for the general public using that um, seven, seven kilometer walkway around War Hill. So I think that, yeah, maybe we need to have a conversation with the Park and Recs people about um, about they're, they're going into their next um, comprehensive plan, so perhaps there's, an op there's opportunities for enhancing it, particularly because we do have those great facilities behind Jamestown and the Clara Burr Baker for walking, and also the walking path that goes from Freedom Park up to, up to our um, middle and elementary school on, on Jolly Pond Road. So there's, we already have some relationships, and perhaps this is another one we can enhance and improve. So I think that's a great idea. My second comment is, um, not in this current year CIP, because I, I do think we're in a good position with that, and like to thank Dr. Hearn for that. But I have some concerns in the out years with a discussion of capacity expansion at the high school. Um, and I think I've said before, before we do expansion, have we, have we decided as a community that maintaining schools of a relatively mid, low mid-range size is what we want as a community, or do we want to start growing high schools that are closer to, you know, 19 to 2,000 students, or do we want to create high schools? I think there's a, it, I think that's a discussion before we get into those out years that I'd like to see this community have based on research and best practices. And as Ms. Cook has pointed out several times, for a division of our size, we have the fewest number of school buildings. And I still happen to believe that keeping high schools more more compact provides a lot more opportunities for interactions of students and teachers and parents um, and community with those schools and building those communities. So I have not so much a concern about this year um, going forward for 17, but I do in the forward year think that we need now as a board and the community to engage in what, what, what do we want our high schools for the 21st century to look like. And if we want to do 21st educational opportunities, does that mean we do it better and smaller schools with more collaboration or with larger schools with more opportunities but less collaborate. I mean, I think we need, we need you all to do the research to help the board and community come, to, come forward on that. That's just my thought. Um, other than that, I don't have too many more comments, though it would be helpful for me as a board member, though I know I will be on the prioritizing meeting. If you could let us know which ones are for safety and ADA and compliance reasons and which are capacity needs and which are I don't know. I think that everything is either safety or capacity pretty much at this point. But if you could let us know which are which, that would be great and helpful. And I think it'd be helpful for the Planning Commission to know that too. Dr. Beers. Yeah, I agree with Mrs. Minor about the <coughs> uh, capacity of uh, not just the high school, it's any school. Um, it, this division has 
um, has, has uh, a lot of pride in uh, keeping the size of the high schools um, at the size that they uh, <clears throat> currently are. And, um, and there is research that um, really validates the, uh, the value of um, keeping, high, uh, keeping high schools um, at the lower end rather than, uh, than the high school schools that are two, 3,000. Um, so when it comes to expanding, and, and this is a, you know, this is a, a conversation with the community is, is do we build, a, you know, another school or do we expand our existing high school so they become larger? And I, I think, uh, you know, there, there are educational and philosophical um, reasons for that. Um, and, the, and, the, and the physical footprint of the schools on the property that they have. Right. Where do we impact, what do we impact in? Right. No, I, 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 I agree. The other thing, the, other, the only other thing I would say about the, um, the, the walk, uh, that walk through, is even if we do build a first rate um, uh, walk through that covers that, you know, that goes across that ravine, has lights, all those kinds of things, that ravine is quite a ways away from Lafayette High School and also from WISC. I still am concerned about even well-lit places in the evening can, um, um, can potentially um, create risks for our, um, our students, for, for our young people that choose to use that. And um, uh, I, I, um, I'm not opposed to putting it in, you know, farther down, but I, philosophically, I'm just, I'm, I'm uh, I, I would be very uncomfortable, um, given the fact that things could happen on that walkway, um, and it would, it would be quite a ways away from, uh, from those students, and so I, um, I, I, I would, I, I would, uh, I, I would simply say, um, that uh, to be really cautious about that. Okay. Mrs. Hummel, do you have another comment? Um, I wanted to thank Mrs. Cook for the suggestion about Parks and Rec because I, I do think it does seem like it's a Parks and Rec kind of promoting healthy, promoting walking, um, access, the, the whole thing I think does seem to fall uh, in that area more so than HVAC systems and roofs and things like that. Um, but I, I, I do think it's an access issue and it's an access issue for Lafayette High School um, athletes. And I do appreciate that we don't want to pit one school's needs against the others. I, I can appreciate that. Um, I also think we should um, when we have schools and we have different fields and different access to those fields that we need to just keep that that in mind um, my other question was really more about uh, just changing gears altogether the the 300,000 for the uh, makerspace and how basically whether that I'm assuming that's talking about knocking down wall or making actual if someone could just explain what the three hundred thousand dollars, we can involves. actually we can um, we can provide you with some information and uh, architectural just very basic preliminary sketch of what it would look like in terms of makerspace. I can provide that to the board. I think that would be helpful because uh, whatever and and is that the three hundred thousand? It 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 translates pretty evenly from one school to the other school's environment and, and facilities. And that's that's what I'm trying to kind of wrap my mind around. As you're aware, we have uh, $300,000 for the other two high schools in the out years. And until their programs are launched and moving into place, it's difficult to, to know if the spaces will need to look exactly alike because they'll be built to support the programs that they're developing. Um, with, with their grant opportunities. So we put the placeholder in to provide that equi equitable opportunity to all three of the high schools. 
Dr. Heron, Dr. Heron, does so are we talking about three hundred thousand dollars for Warhill alone, or are we talking about three hundred thousand dollars per high school? Per high school. Three hundred thousand dollars per high school. Warhill comes first because the program is already launched, right. and then we've put the same amount into the into the the planning for the next two years, not knowing yet what the needs of the schools are, but giving an equitable amount to each high school as they develop their innovative programs at the high school level. And is this for pathways or? For for Project Lead the Way? Um, this is focused on pathways and maker space and collaboration space for students um, for project-based learning mainly. And I believe the Warhill uh, amount does include a chemistry lab. It does. So the more, the more detail on that would be appreciated. That's Certainly, we can provide you some additional detail on, on that amount for sure. Any other questions from board members? <coughs> Um, I, uh, jumping off where Mrs. Helmel was, if, if for the 2018 projects and maybe the 2019 projects have a, pair, a sentence or two to kind of briefly explain, I think we've been exposed to those before, um, but uh, just to put that on the top of our, top of our stack would be a good thing, good thing to do, uh, especially prior to the November 1st meeting so that we can um, all come at, come at it from the same side. May I draw your attention to one thing that's in your packet this evening? Uh -oh. If you go. open your folder on the left-hand side, we do have the details and verifications of where we received all of the information for the fiscal year 18 projects. So a lot of your questions about that first year, funded year, will be in that packet. If you need additional information, certainly we can provide that to you. And we have not done that in the out years. Thank you for officially meeting my request. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's what happens. The uh, second page, uh, opening of Jamesville Middle School, new buses needed in fiscal year 19. When are those buses, you say uh, redistricting plans been approved by the school board, will that be too late for you to react in order to have, when we, re when we approve the redistricting plan, say we do it in the spring of 18, is that too late for you to react to get buses? It's going to require continued discussion with our counterparts on the county and city. And that's one reason we added that bullet here so that we can have that discussion and put that on their radar. They are aware that they have support costs, including buses that will be coming online with the new, new middle school. Um, so we just wanted to make sure that we had that remark in our presentation and we will continue those communication lines with our counterparts. In other words, yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> recommended projects for 2018-2022, the second to last slide. Um, we have, you have dollar amounts for each fiscal year. Yes. Have those dollar amounts um, been budgeted by the county and the city? Um, yeah, I think they give us guidelines for how much our CIP can be per year. We are above what the fiscal year 18 amount was in their original plan, but we have explanations for why that is, um, particularly with the roof. Um, at Lafayette, that cost coming in substantially higher than what we anticipated last year. Um, the DJ Montague piece, the change in our practice for Rawls Bird with the HVAC because of the need to replace that system. So we have explanations and we'll have to communicate that with the city and county to ensure that they understand why those funding levels are different this year. Um, they do forecast out for five years. The thing to keep in mind as well is in their CIP, it is strictly maintenance items. They don't particularly put new facilities or expansions in their CIP because they seek a different funding source. Right. So our plan is a total comprehensive look at what we need from a CIP standpoint. When they develop their plan, they develop it from the resources that they have available. So our plans could look different. So how much above the county's budget are we at the moment? Over four years, we're $12 million over. Okay, but don't they have a number for next year? They do not have a fiscal year 22 number for me because we start our process so early. They do not start their process until the beginning of the year starts. They don't have a fiscal year 2018? 22. They, they don't are. have 22. From 2018 through 2021, our plan at this point is $12 million over what the city and county gave us as their projected number through 2021 last year. Okay. But they don't break it down to you by on an annual year for how much they capital? They do. I don't have that breakdown with me. I know it was $12 million over four years. Okay. Could you just send that to us sure when can. you get it? 
just so we we know. Um, Actually, I might have it. Actually, isn't, isn't that this? No, no that's it's not that. Mm -mm. Um, fiscal year 18 is 1.7 million. Over. Over. Fiscal year 19 is 4.8 million. Over. Fiscal year 20 is 2.8 million. Over. And fiscal year 21 is 3.8 million. Over. Uh-huh. Okay. So, um, once again, we have to have discussion with our funding partners and, and to understanding of what our uh, what our needs are going to be and where where they can where they can fund it from. So. Um, I think that's all I have. Thank you. Any other board member comments at this point on the CIP? Sure. That brings us to 11.01 .01, board members' comments. Comments from board members this evening, Ms. Miner. First, I'd like to say congratulations to Lafayette's PTSA for win winning the award. Um, parent involvement at our schools is key to student success, and PTSAs are one of the most helpful ways to engage parents at their school. So, I, and I know as you move through middle and high school, it's much more difficult. So, good work on getting that award. Um, it's impressive. Um, also, congratulations to Warhill, Jamestown, and Lafayette for the WISE Financial Award. Um, I would like to encourage the PTA, PTSAs um, division-wide, as I know you drive, um, your membership drives some of those awards, um, to advertise more broadly than just the members of your schools. I think that you have board members here that might join if you sent us an envelope. Um, I think some members do belong, but I also think there are business and community members that you might reach out to who I know support you on a regular basis because the more we draw on our parents and our community, the stronger our schools are. So I would just encourage you to do that. Um, I'd like to thank Ms. O'Brien for inquiring about the pacing on the naming of the schools. Um, certainly we are aware that the community has met um, once if not twice. Yes, I believe the, the committee's met at least once at this time, and I'll provide yeah. you an update in okay. next week. All right. Thank you. Thank you for that. And um, and the groundbreaking is a, was a great event today. I, it is difficult for us to move forward with facilities. I have some experience um, in my 26 years here, so it always accumulation um, of a lot of work by a lot of individuals from the school division, from the county, from the city, from parents and community members who advocate for those facilities for our students. And in a community that is always growing, um, in my 26 years, and looks like it will be growing for a long time going forward, um, being ahead of the curve on facilities is difficult. And often because of the way we manage our facilities, we may bid it out not in the most fiscally wise time instead of having the opportunity to bid projects when um, they would be less expensive for both borrowing and for construction, but I um, was excited today. It was a great event, and uh, I'm happy to see that we're moving ahead on that fourth middle school. Ms. Young? I, I, I would like to add, um, just to what uh, Ms. Miner said, um, uh, I would like an update on the Rawls Bird situation, uh, the renaming process and where we are in that process. Um, I didn't say anything when Matthew Whaley was giving their little news program. That's, I would love to have that at my home every morning. Um, I think that would be a lot more fun than, than what I currently hear. Um, but I do want to congratulate them on that program. I'm also very impressed that the Parents Academy is going to address the need for resiliency in our students. I think um, one of the things is we, we watch our young college students going off the need to become resilient in the face of what's happening currently uh, in our world, I think, is a necessity. And as an adult, you have to be resilient. And we certainly want to uh, release high school seniors into a world with some skills so that they can be resilient. There's a lot of things out that they're going to face that they haven't had an opportunity or challenged, have been challenged yet to face those. So I'm excited about that as a topic. So I want to thank uh, the Parents Academy for that. Ms. Cook? Um, yeah, I'd like to um, thank the staff, uh, administration staff, for their handling of preparing uh, and uh, with for Hurricane Matthew. I know that was 
So, <laughs> yeah, exciting. And so thank you for doing that and putting everybody's safety first. We appreciate that you do that for every weather event. I um, also like to thank the citizens and students who applied to, uh, for and agreed to serve on our advisory committees. That's a really important role and um, it makes the work of this division better and stronger um, when the more people that participate. So thank you for that. Um, I'd also like to um, echo Ms. Miner's comments about today's groundbreaking at uh, James Blair. It was a great day for the community, a great day for regional collaboration. Um, uh, and so that was, it was a pleasure to be a part of that. Also like to thank the county and the city for approving our year end spending request recently. Um, that was uh, great news and um, excited again to have such a um, successful regional partner, um, partners to work with. And lastly, I'd just like to say thank you to Ryan McKinnon. Uh, congratulations. Uh, we will miss you. Um, you've done a great job um, of reporting on the school division and trying to really learn and understand the issue. So thank you very much. You did a great job and we'll miss you. Uh, thank you. Um, I would echo, the, echo on the groundbreaking ceremony, whoever. Anybody? I'll say something. This is home. <laughs> I, I wanted to um, say I enjoyed Manufacturing Day. That was, uh, I was only able to kind of come to the lunch uh, part of it, but next year I'm going, to, I'm in for the whole thing. <laughs> I'm going to go and go to all the manufacturing sites. Uh, for, uh, for those of you who may not know about that event, I think it's a great way for our high school students to actually uh, see the manufacturing opportunities that are in our own backyard. Um, it was, it was just great to see their enthusiasm, especially when the students spoke at the luncheon about what they got out of the day. So it was uh, a very nice uh, opportunity to bridge this uh, need between our community for skilled workforce and the schools. I'd also like to uh, say I enjoyed the groundbreaking, even though I was not offered a golden shovel or hard hat, but that's okay. And it was still nice to see Dr. Heron out there shoveling uh, the dirt. So good for that. And then I wanted to thank the uh, community that is tonight supporting the uh, WJCC Education Foundation uh, Committee and thank the teachers and staff who submitted grants uh, for innovation. So we'll see what comes up uh, in the coming months, which grants are going to be awarded and that'll be something that'll be kind of exciting to, to look forward to. I think that's it. Thank you. Um, Okay, so now everybody stole my thunder. What am I going to talk about? Um, <laughs> thanks, thanks for the uh, for the Mrs. Overcamp Smith and the public relations crew for the groundbreaking ceremonies. Uh, special bonus to whoever ordered the weather for today. Um, 85 degrees in the middle of October and a nice sunny day was was wonderful. Uh, thank for the good support we got from our board members and our, um, from the board members who attended, the supervisors and the city council for all of their support of that event and uh, their support for the the new school. Um, Mrs. Cook mentioned the year-end spending plan. Um, that's uh, another sign of good cooperation between this this body, um, our board of supervisors, and the city council. Um, uh, we have we have good communication, and we um, uh, we're all pulling on the same rope. We all want what's best for the community. Uh, we all want good schools, and I, I appreciate their good support. Mrs. Hummel mentioned the Education Foundation. Um, uh, the amount of support that we get from the Education Foundation, the, the um, fairly small grants that go to the teachers, but the, the, show, the sign of support that those grants show to the, to the schools, to the teachers, to the school, to the students, um, understanding that that is coming, you know, directly from the community uh, is really uplifting for the, for the school system and for the teachers, and I, I appreciate all those who participate in that. Uh, manufacturing Day is an all-in thing. Um, <laughs> I was, I've, I've been to a couple, couple of them all in, and uh, so, some of the things you're, that happens in Williamsburg, James City County, really, it's, it's, it was, that was uh, pretty amazing. And uh, Mrs. Cook mentioned uh, Mr. McKimmon leaving. Um, just when we started breaking him in, he just moves on. So. <laughs> um, uh, but we wish you all the best and wish you all the, all the luck. Um, upcoming events. 
uh, school liaison meets November 4th. It seems like you guys are always meeting. Um, <laughs> Building D at uh, Mounts, you're meeting up here, Mounts Bay, at 1 o'clock? Apparently. Okay. Uh, policy committee, 11, November 29th at 1.30, room 113 in the Stryker Center. Uh, the VSBA annual convention is November 16th through 18th at uh, the Williamsburg, Williamsburg Lodge and Conference Center where um, many of our associates from across the state come for professional development and uh, benchmarking. Great, uh, good event. Uh, we have a closed session on October 24th at 5 o'clock in room 309 at the Annex, followed by an open session uh, immediately after the closed session to evaluate or award a search firm for the uh, superintendent search. Uh, we have a closed session November 1st, 6 o'clock in room 309 in the Annex, uh, followed at 6.30 by a work session also in, in room 300 at the Annex on November 1st. Uh, closed session November 15th at 6 o'clock here at Building F, uh, followed by a public hearing on the CIP at 6.30 um, here in Building F, and immediately followed, meeting following the public hearing is a regular meeting of the school board um, also here in Building F. And... Uh, with that, thank you all for your attendance and uh, support and activity, and we are adjourned.